Hello, Chaplain Kelly here. Today I want to talk to you about the five lessons that I learned on promoting from captain to major, so stay tuned. Hello everybody, welcome back. Chaplain Kelly here. Today I want to talk to you about the five lessons that I learned when I promoted from captain to that of major and this is important especially for you chaplains and especially younger chaplains and junior captain chaplains and this is the advice that i want to give you that i learned personally and it every situation is just a little bit different every situation is just a little bit off from my experience so i encourage you just take these for face value and maybe you can apply some of these in your life and in your career Firstly, I want to talk to you about that of paperwork. It is important to have your paperwork together. Now, what do I mean by paperwork? I mean all of your, your record in your ORB, your officer's record brief, also your OERs, your evaluations. You want to have all your records together. You want to have all your documents, important documents, any uh, certificates that need to be uploaded into IPERMs, anything that needs to be uploaded far as educational certificates and awards, all that has to be put together. Now, once it is time for you to go before the board to from captain to major, you're going to have a board file opened up. And in that board file is an opportunity for you to scrub and to clean and to take care of those items that need to be taken care of. For an example, if there is a duplicate OER, or if there is a missing OER, or maybe that OER is just uploaded weird and you want to have it re-uploaded, now's the time in that period to be able to make sure that is up there. And also all your awards. I have come across several chaplains in my career who did not have all their awards uploaded and rightly all the certificates in IPERMS, but also all the awards listed on their ORB. And it's important to have all your schools on your ORB, your everything's up to date in your wards, and also you need to have your picture. Now, as this filming is going on, the Army no longer uses the official DA photo for the boards. Now that may change at a later date. It may change fairly soon, who knows? But the thing is you need to have your picture updated. You need to make look slim and trim as you can. You need to make all your have all your wards looking sharp and clean and have them there and ready and your uniform look pristine. You, and the my advice is, is to go to a drill sergeant, go to a senior NCO, go to somebody who knows uniforms and make sure your ribbons, your rack is all nice and neat and spaced properly and everything according to regulations. And when you take your DA photo Take pride in that. That is important. Now, it may not be right now for a board, but people will look at your DA photo and you may use it for your commander, your next assignment. Uh, so it is important to update that and keep it. As soon as you get an award, make sure that you get a new DA photo and make sure your uniform is spotless and clean and you look presentable in your uniform. Now, that leads me to another issue, and that is the OER. The OR, it's important for you to, when you go before the board, generally you want to have several top blocks. You want to have three or more top blocks. And especially they want to see, yes, a heartbeat. If you've ever heard this before in your career, they want you to have a heartbeat within your OERs. You may have one OER, evalu your evaluation that may have a great write-up, but it's not a top block. But then you may have one that's a great write-up and a great and a top block. And then another one is not. It's, a, it's okay to have those heartbeats, but when you go before the board, and this is my experience, at least your top couple or several need to be top locks as much as you can get that uh, on the top. At least one OER has to have a top lock on the top, and then you, they can, as they go down, they can see all the others. But it's important. It's important to reflect that. And how do you get a top lock? Well, that's something with a lot of prayer, doing hard work so your commander and all your command sees what you're doing 
and, and you just express that. Uh, let your commander know, hey, I'm going before the board. Is it, you know, I'm I'm looking at board time. So whatever you can do, do sir, ma'am, to help me out, I would greatly appreciate it. And, and they will try. Uh, I've been blessed and I've had great commanders in my time who've been able to go out of their way to help me. Because in all honesty, when you have are in a field artillery unit, those field artillery commanders, a battalion commander, wants to take care of his field artillery captains, make sure that they get promoted, they get their top blocks, and they're not really looking out for the chaplain too much. So that's where you you and go, your brigade chaplain, and especially your brigade chaplain, may has a voice in that decision-making process. Now, there are some of you that may not deserve a top block. That's just the way it is. Some of you are better off, not in the army chaplaincy, but back at the pastorate. And sometimes that's sadly, but it does have to happen for you to go back, that you won't get a top block and you won't promote. But if you look out for soldiers, you look out for your command, you may have that relationship with your commander, then it will work out. I firmly believe that. And, and that leads me to another thing is to build relationships. Build a relationship with your command team, your commander, the XO, the sergeant major, all those NCOs that are there within your battalion or unit. Make sure you build relationships, not just with the average private, but you also have to with the senior command. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first got into the army, sometimes I was a little intimidated by rank. I was a little intimidated by my commander who was a little bit younger than me, but they had that rank uh, on, on their chest. And so you don't need to be intimidated by them. You're, you're their special staff officer to the commander. You have the right and the entrance to go in to the commander and tell them, hey, this is what's going on with your unit, sir, ma'am. And this is how maybe a solution that I can help you with. And let's try this out or that out. And so they're there to listen to you and give you advice and guidance of what they want you to go in the direction because it's not your unit, it's the commander's unit. And so you are there to help the commander in the religious program, but it's his or hers religious program, not yours. And that's what we have to understand. So, but it's important to build those relationships, build deep relationships, get to know them, have coffee with them, talk with them. They're people too. And, and they need the Lord just as much as any other person may need the Lord. So it's important for you to build those relationships. Not, like I said, not with just the private out there, the private snuffy or the average Joe, but also the command team as well, especially your XO because your XO a lot of times is the one you're going to see more than your battalion commander. Your XO is your immediate raider on your OER and that XO, you need to get to know that XO, get to know their family, get to know their children or, or their spouse and, and be a part in their lives and offer prayer or offer whatever you can to be able to help them and counsel. There's been many a times I've sat in my XO's office and just talk to them about their family issues. And because it was an opportune time to do that. But I didn't force myself, but I veiled myself to that. And so you, if you are a young captain, chaplain, I encourage you to build those relationships up. And lastly, you, number five, are the best career manager in your career. Don't allow anybody else to look out for you because they generally won't because they'll forget about you. I've seen several chaplains who their records are unclean, they've been passed over because they no one's helped them mentor them and counsel them and help them and guide them in their career. So as a chaplain, you're also a staff officer and you have to take care of your career. You have to take care of all your paperwork and all the things that is for your career. You need to be a staff officer. So I encourage you to get out of the pastorate mindset all the time and become that administrator that you need to be for your career. Now, does it mean you're ch chasing after paperwork all the time? Because you, there needs to be that healthy balance of being a pastor and an administrator and a staff officer for your commander. But you do need to learn that skill of how to balance between, because I've seen many of chapels are great at pastoral skills, but they're horrible at administration. And I've seen others are great at administration, but they're horrible pastors. There has to be that balance. So I encourage you today, if you're a young chaplain or a junior chaplain watching this video, from my experience, 
in my 12 years of ministry thus far in the Army Chaplaincy, you have to balance your life with prayer, with scripture, but also knowing the needs of your unit, the needs of your command team, the needs of your soldiers that are in your unit, and be able to minister to them the best way you can. And sometimes the ministering means you gotta be in a good position to be a staff officer and a administrator and take care of that because the other staff officers, they're watching you. The S3 is watching you. The S1 is watching you. The S4 is watching you. The S6, he's watching you. They're watching you and see how you handle yourself at such as like a command and staff meeting or other meetings that is showing your vitalness there because you have slides to produce you have things that reports that you have to come across you have to do everything the way the unit wants you to do and you have to learn so that is all my encouragement for you today that you will take these lessons learned and hopefully apply some of that in your career and maybe you will just excel far beyond anything that any of us can think or imagine because you never know the next chief of chaplains may be watching this video one day. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you always. Amen.